The following broadcast is brought to you by Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas. For more information about the church, log on to accelerate.church.cc. Welcome to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. My name is Jeremy File, and I'm the pastor at Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas, and we want you. So glad you tuned in today because we're coming to you from the studios here at Accelerate Church in Amarillo, Texas, and that means I have a special guest with me, and it's my pastor, one of my favorite guests ever to have with me, Dr. Mark T. Barkley. How are you today, sir? I'm alive and well, Jeremy. I'm very glad about it. Praise God. Yeah. And uh, it's good to be a Christian. You know, there's never, ever, never been a better day to be a Christian and walk with God like the day you and I live in right now. That's right. It's an exciting time to live in, and it's really an end-time hour. We're in the last days. I know uh, for po- people that pay attention in the Bible, the last days kicked off at Pentecost, and that's what Peter preached, right? You know, I always say he kicked the, the door open and started preaching to repent because they said, what should we do? And he started talking about these. this is what Joel prophesied. These are the last days. So we're here in the last days. I would dare say we're in the last minutes of the last days. And many of the fathers that you've had in your life are great generals. They're they're all in heaven now. Yes, they are. But if you would talk to us and and our audience today a little bit about how they would talk to you about end times, how they thought Jesus was coming in their day, that must mean we're really, really close today. Well, if I went through the list, you know, I think mostly— uh, Hilton Sutton, a lot of people knew his voice in the kingdom, you know, and uh, Hilton many years ago, he was pastoring and started teaching on the book of Revelation to try to answer questions of believers in his church that uh, that uh, were just coming to him all the time saying, what about this and that, Pastor? And he got in it to it pretty deep and started recording it and writing some things on it. And before you knew it, people all over the kingdom all different denominations even were having Hilton come in and teach on eschatology, the study of uh, the final things. Lester Summerall was one of my dads. Dr. Summerall was an absolute guru when it come to Israel, the Middle East, the last days, and on goes the story. Uh, John Osteen was my pastor for a long time, though I've never really been a member of Lakewood Church. I met Pastor John after I was in full-time ministry. But uh, he was always convinced that we should look up every day because the Lord's going to come at an hour that we think not. Mm. And, and uh, the, the warning he would always say is, remember, our Lord Jesus said, do not let this catch you unaware. Wow. Keep your eyes on Christ. Mm. So all of them, I can keep going. I love it. I love they, hearing it. They all knew they, they lived with this consciousness that any given moment, the trumpet could blow and we'll be out of here. Yeah. The doctrine of the imminent return of Jesus. Yes. I think of a verse when it comes to this and how important this is in a Christian's life. It says those that have this hope, this blessed hope, will purify themselves. Yes. Have you noticed you've traveled all over the world? You've got a global ministry impacting the whole globe, literally. Have you noticed that when people don't think much about being at the end and that Jesus could come. They live a different lifestyle than those that are looking? Sure, absolutely. I mean, if we were convinced this was the season, we would all be making some different choices. If the Lord told us when it was, like, I'm coming on August 11th, 2021, (laughs) let me tell you what, by August 10th, there'd be the biggest massive repentant revival you've ever known in your life. The day before. But the Lord doesn't want that. He doesn't want us to bat like sheep and live like pigs and then right at the very end decide to go ahead and be a good Christian, you know. Come on. Uh, I see the yeah, a lot. Of, it seems like the church is a little confused, not everybody, about his return. And someone said, well, is there one second coming or two second comings? Because preachers like myself, we believe in what we call the rapture. And uh, someone the other day said, well, you know, Brother Barkley, the word rapture isn't really in the Bible. (laughs) I said, well, neither is the word Bible, but you believe in the Bible. (laughs) Uh, But the definition for the word catching away is certainly in the Bible. Sure. And um, but it's not the second coming. On the second coming, the Bible's clear that Jesus will put his foot on the Mount of Olives. 
But in the catching away of the church, according to the New Testament verses, he will appear in the air. I call it the last appearance of Christ. So when he rose from the dead, he appeared onto different uh, groups of disciples. And then he'd disappear. And then he'd appear to another group. And then he'd go. The last recorded appearance we seem to have was when he was taken up. Uh, Book of Acts explains it. Um, in fact, it was such a, a, a mind-boggling thing that God sent two angels to say, Hey, all you men in Galilee, why do you stand here gazing up? In the same way he went, that's how he's going to return. Yeah, so he's coming back. Oh, he's coming back. People. And anybody that argues with that, they need special prayer for sure. <laughs> they, they really do. I mean, that's pretty... That's pretty clear taught and very eminent. But on that so-called, as we call it, the rapture of the church, that's the last appearance of Christ before all end times. Mm. We see him in the air. He calls us up in the twinkling of an eye, and so will we be with him thereafter. Yeah. Later on, the second coming actually happens where the Lord puts things in order for the final final battles you and know, victories. I believe Zechariah prophesied and talked about Jesus is going to come put his foot down and Mount Olives is going to split in two. Yeah. So I've had some people, you know, approach me cuz Dr. Barkley I preach on end times all the time and people love to approach me and say, "Well, we're already in the tribulation or already in the millennial reign." And I said, "Well, Mount Olives hasn't split in two yet." And Jesus well, isn't ruling and reigning up with an iron fist, right? I mean, <laughs> Now, I've had days where I might have agreed with that person that we might be in the tribulation period. <laughs> but if this is the millennial reign, I am so highly disappointed. I'm going to get spitting mad any minute. <laughs> Surely it's got to be better than this, you know. But There are some things the Bible's clear about has to happen yes. before Jesus puts his foot down. Yes. Uh, but what you're actually saying to our audience today is there's nothing, uh, tell me if this is right, there's nothing that has to happen prophetically for the rapture of the church. Jesus, there's nothing keeping correct. him from coming today for the church. Well, that's correct. Wow. That's so, correct. I can't find anything, and I'm not maybe the the highest scholar on the planet, but I'm a pretty good Bible student and have been for 50 years. So I, I don't see anything that would stop the Lord from coming right now other than the Heavenly Father saying, not yet, not well, yet, hang on, not yet. You do have a doctorate in theology, though, so it's not yeah, like, I, I do. mean, sure. so I'm not, I know you're not bragging about that, but I'm, I'm saying... For those listening, they're like, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, he's got a doctorate in theology. He has studied this thing. Yeah, I've told people that I've used that because I say, well, if it's not good enough that I don't have a doctorate in theology, my pastor does, and he agrees with me. Yeah. All right, <laughs> get going. You know, it's amazing to me how many New Testament, now Old Testament too, how many verses there are that talk about us looking up, yeah, preparing ourselves, don't let this come like a thief in the night, which is not a thief, and it may not be in the dark. But the warning from our own Christ was, don't let this catch you off guard. And then you got all kinds of biblical illustrations, like the ten virgins. They're all together. They're all waiting for the bridegroom, right? Yeah. The oil starts running out. Yeah. Pretty soon five don't have any. The Lord comes, the bridegroom, that's Jesus Christ. He comes, he takes the five, and the other five are left behind. That's a pretty simple, second-grade level biblical portrait that he is coming, and not everybody's going. Mm. So if I had no other evidence than that, Jeremy, it would drive me to get my nose in this book to find out why did those five virgins run out of oil and mm. make sure I'm not one of them. Though there's a little... There's a little definition, it seems, in there about full and empty, oil uh -huh. and not. It's called the foolish and wise virgins, not the full and empty. I think the thing that, that really makes my hair stand up on end is the fact they were all virgins. Yeah. And the Lord's not going to call anybody a virgin in that context, talking about a young lady or a young man that hasn't consummated marriage yet. Right. That's not what he's talking about. Right. Uh you know, the Lord's not looking to come for young virgins. Right. He's coming for uh, the blood wash. So f the word virgin there literally means unspotted from the world. Ooh, come now, on. first of all, that's an impossibility to be untouched from the world without 
the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mm. So all 10 virgins, just with that simple definition, they all have to be uh, Christians at some level. Yeah, that should really wake you up if you're listening to us right now. Let me just say it bluntly. Jesus is coming. You better be living in such a way that you're expecting him to come. How would you want him to find you? Right. You you don't want him to find you on the sidelines doing nothing, just waiting on him to come back. Some people hear this message about the rapture of the church, and they think that we think you just sit around and do nothing waiting on him to come. But that's not at all what we believe. We believe that you get about the Father's business and do what he said to do because that's how you want your master to find you. Yeah, I mean, we're not escapist mentality people. So we're not sitting around like boo-hoo and, oh, my God, we're going to get stuck in a forest or a jungle or a canyon somewhere. (laughs) No food, no drink, can't buy, can't sell. That's the tribulation period. That's not the pre-rapture situation, number one. But we're not looking for the Lord to come because we're beat up. We don't know what to do next. Oh, my God. Uh, no, we're not escapists. We, the, our Bible tells us we are a triumphant church. We are a glorious church. And it says he's coming for a church. That's not the second coming. We'll be gone. He's coming for a church without spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. Mm. So that's purification, man. And that goes back to the story you were telling about being unspotted from the world. Yeah. Which, by the way, reminds me of Jude. I always say he's the half-brother of Jesus, but he wrote in his book, it's short but powerful, in Jude 1, he said, on some have compassion, making a distinction. That's a difference. Right. But others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Yes. So how will you hate the garment defiled by the flesh, Pastor? If all you do is feed the flesh all day. Well, and now you're being taught that that's okay, that we're saved by grace, and therefore you can live any way you want to. God doesn't see it, doesn't care about it. He's blinded to it. All, of course, is an extremely inaccurate uh, definition of grace. But uh, I know the Lord really dealt with me a couple years ago in prayer, and he said, I have a problem. And I I thought, well, Lord, if you have a problem, we're doomed and he said, I, have, I said, what is the problem? And he said, well, uh, I have a whole army of spokesmen in my holy desk teaching my people how to sear their conscience and live mm. in their bed of sin. Ma, ma. It's That's happening. what's being taught. It's happening right now. Yeah. Don't feel bad about it. No, no reason to say you're sorry. You're saved by grace. That's what they're teaching. Bad like a sheep, live like a pig. <laughs> And I can't believe the father sent his son to be ridiculed and mocked like that. Mm, to live that lifestyle. You're correct. Wow, man. I hope you're listening. That's that's quite the warning. But, folks, it's serious. I think that's one reason, Pastor Barkley, that people don't want to hear about Jesus coming back. They don't want to get serious about the relationship with God. They want to do like the children of Israel did when they had that golden calf where they just rose up to play, sat down to eat. That's basically all they did. That's kind of the lifestyle most Christians want to live. They don't want to get serious. They're numb. It's like they're numb. What is it, mesmerized? Are they hypnotized? Are they delusional? Wow. I think you're about out of time, aren't you? (laughs) We're almost out of time, but time flies when you're having fun. You've been listening to Dr. Mark T. Barkley. And if you want more information on his ministry, go to marktbarkley.com. You're listening to the Accelerate Church broadcast. This broadcast is brought to you by our partners at Accelerate Church. I'm Pastor Jeremy the pastor of Accelerate Church, and we want you. For more information, go to AccelerateChurch.cc. Be sure and tune in tomorrow. We'll be back right here talking to you on the radio with Dr. Barclay and myself, Jeremy Fox. You've been listening to the Accelerate Church radio broadcast. And if you'd like a copy of this message for a loved one or yourself, please give us a call so we can get a copy in your hand. Our phone number is 806 806- 418-8913. We also invite you to download the Accelerate Church app, which is available on your Apple or Android device. You can listen to previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, as well as watch live streaming at the touch of a button. Or if you're in the area and would like to stop by for a service, we would love to have you. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street in Amarillo, Texas. And our service times are Sunday at 10 a.m., and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We look forward to meeting you very soon.